Good evening, it's Joyful Hermit. Well, I want to share more on, um, I find this um, St. Soloan so uh, right on target with things that I need to know and be reminded of and practice at a deeper level and hopefully helpful to some of you or many of you maybe at some point in time, if not right now. But um, I want to just go over, uh, and this might be a two-parter to keep it shorter, hopefully, because it's a lot of information that I find helpful. But it's um, what he taught and understood and learned himself about spiritual warfare. And he, um, he also, he talks so much about humility and to humble the humbling our souls that humility is necessary for obedience for love and for also to combat against evil so humility is very key for hermits for anyone it's for our spiritual life so um so much suffering can be brought on by ourselves and um it happens when we become agitated or irritated over daily events and encounters with people and situations. So um, understanding how we can avoid that is really helpful. And um, St. Solo in the Steritz gives many examples and many ideas on that. So I'm just going to read some of the thoughts that he had that he wrote down and also that other people wrote things that he would say that might be very helpful to you all, and they are to me. So he said this, the Steritz did, If you have followed your own will, then you are conquered by the enemy. Remember, he's very keen on being God's will. And a test for that, if we're not in God's will, is we will not be at peace. We will have unrest. So, um, if you have followed your own will, then you are conquered by the enemy, and despondency will come upon your soul. Um, you will hate your If you hate your fellow person, it means that you have fallen away from God, and an evil spirit has taken possession of you. I mean, he lays it out as it is, and it may seem extreme, but it's truth. It's real, and he he knew these things. Just today is the feast day of Padre Pio. He, too, understood very much spiritual warfare is a part of our lives. It's a big part of our spiritual lives, and we are either going to be on top of it and understand it and deal with it, or we will be taken over and and suffer as a result. And, and it will be a suffering of our own doing and of our own experiences. And that's not holy suffering. That's not a suffering that God has allowed for us, for our own good. As St. Francis de Sales would speak about that, you know, suffering that God gives teaches us, guides us. We learn from it. We benefit from the suffering that God allows. But the suffering that we have created for ourselves by following our own will or by allowing evil to get on top of us, to trick us, um, that's, that's just evil suffering. It's unnecessary. We don't need it. So says, he says here, but if you do good unto your brother, you will gain rest for your conscience. If you subdue your own will, your enemies will be driven off and you will receive peace in your soul. So a lot is really up to us in love to, to do good and to insist on that. Um, doing good and love is always in God's will. If you forgive your brother the affronts he puts upon you and love your enemies, then you will receive forgiveness for your sins 
and the Lord will let you come to know the love of the Holy Spirit. So, I hadn't really thought of that so much before. That, I mean, we read about it, or you may have heard about it, that, you know, if we love our enemies, if we forgive those who um, talk about us or say things about us, affront us, um, cause us distress, or or just say, you know, or insult us, I guess, uh, or put us down. But if we can love those people and forgive them, we will receive forgiveness for our own sins, for whatever sins we have going on, not even necessarily in connection with a situation with, with someone else that in particular that we have forgiven or that we love. It may be other things that we're doing, but God will forgive us our sins. If we make it a lifelong practice, a, make it a habitual action to love others and to forgive them, and we will be forgiven, and we will come to know the love of the Holy Spirit as a result. Our, our sins will be forgiven, and God will gift us with the love of the Holy Spirit. He also says, and when you have humbled yourself entirely, you will find perfect rest in God. Humble yourself entirely. Um, some little, I can't even remember what it was. I was painting today. I made it for uh, three hours and 45 minutes. A lot of the time was spent taping up all along the edge of, something that's going to be two different colors of real close in colors but underneath the eaves it's a long stretch along the back of this house and i didn't get it all finished but i got a, a big chunk of it all taped off and roller rollered one coat of the uh, dove white on the overhang but um Taping it off just took a long time. Every few feet, moving the ladder and inching my way down or by feet. And and I, I got off into prayer. Uh, the Holy Spirit does that with manual labor. You will find if it's methodical type that doesn't take um, using your intelligence per se to do th something. Your intellect isn't as needed. And the actions and all, it becomes in a flow. It's peaceful. It was a lovely day outside in the afternoon. And and uh, the Holy Spirit took me off into prayers. And something came up. Uh, it was a negative thought I had of someone. Um, it had to do with my son who'd cut me off. Nearly, it'll be two years in January. And... I, I was feeling like put upon that I took a front of it just in the thought that came to me of how that happened and um, pride, you know, my own pride of thinking of how I reared him and all that I had provided and used up of whatever money I had left of the divorce then took out loans, you know, provided excellent schooling for him. Um, and uh, my mom helped with an overseas trip. He studied in Oxford, Oxford, England one summer and won an award there as a, he was a, and it was his junior summer. He was going to be a senior. He, uh, she passed away when he was in October of his senior year of college, but she helped pay for that Oxford trip, in addition to my help helping pay for it, and um, there's these thoughts came up to me, and immediately I I was getting, you know, unhappy, and uh, had negative thoughts about it, and I realized just stop this, stop this. I love my son. I loved him. 
I gave of what I could to help him have the best education possible. He's a hard worker. He uh, made the most of it. He got himself into the career that God wanted him in. He is, or at least partly, I think, or it certainly clicked. He's very successful in media, in journalism. And um, from the university he went to, it was a small university, a Catholic university um, in upstate New York. And from there, he landed first job in Washington, D.C. for two years and then CBS in Manhattan, and this kid from a small town. And um, then he was at NBC, and my cousin told me that he's back with CBS in some better position now. So um, I didn't know from him, obviously, he's not speaking to me, but, um, but it, you know, it's just wonderful. And I really had to humble down and think how grateful I was that at least I got something out of the divorce a little you know, and I had I was able to finally buy a house and sold that house in California for more and then bought one in Indiana. So I I had enough to be able to do that. And then by the time, and used my money um, for to help my daughters with their college and to help him. His senior year, I ran out. I was able to get a parent loan. And I downscaled, I kept downscaled, scaling my living conditions in order to keep paying, helping. And I would never have it any other way. I mean, um... For one thing, what would I do with it? You know? So, and then my parents passed, and they, I, I got a third of what they had worked hard for and saved, and um, did well with one house, the, the island house, even though it caused me a, a lot of work and a lot of spiritual lessons. But I realized just in humility. God was humbling me down out there on that patio. And at the same time, I would keep up my uh, praying, going up the ladder and praising God coming down and trying to keep my wits that I would be very careful um, being on that ladder because I was on top of concrete patio. Didn't want to fall. Um, so I... But these thoughts, you know, when the unrest came, and I, I just real, I just prayed, you know, help me to just be so grateful to be able to provide and to help my children. And they had their big student loans to pay off, too huge, and scholarships they got, and grants that they got because they studied hard and worked hard. So, um, praise God that they're all doing well, that I was able to provide. And they were able to work hard and to pay off these loans. Um, they did more than what I did. Um, but just, just to realize how quickly um, the ugliness can come in. And, and then how you, you have to just really fast get back into humility and gratitude for the blessings, the blessings of all that has been offered. Um, and then a peace came back to me, peace came back. But I, I knew I'm not perfectly humble or, or entirely humbled or that thought wouldn't have come up. And it took me a you know, few minutes to get it out of me, get, get it played out of my system. And, uh, and then to come into this sweetness, the gratitude and the, the graciousness of God. And my children are all very grateful for their educations. 
and um, they've said in the past, he, he said also, you know, that he couldn't have done it without the help. And, but he, you know, they all, they all contributed. They worked hard after school jobs all summer. Um, so they, they worked very hard themselves. But it, this is just an example of um, to be humbled entirely. It takes time and it takes conscious awareness when we slip off and get ourselves right back into gratitude and humble down. And, um, you know, like when I was starting to think of what I had had um, paid for, and then, then I had to realize, look at all the student loans they had and how hard they studied and gave up things themselves to get good grades so they could get scholarships and grants. So, you know, it was a team effort, including my mom and dad, who kept pitching in a little bit here, a little bit there, big chunks here, big chunks there. So it's, um, anyway, um, I found perfect rest then. I'm not, I'm not entirely humbled, but... This little experience this afternoon reminded me of how quickly we can get off and then how to get back on to humility with gratitude and love and appreciation for and, and reality of other people, everyone involved helping um, to do good. So St. Saluan also says, let us love our fellows and the Lord will love us. In other words, our fellow men and the Lord will love us. Think not my soul that the Lord loveth thee if thou look askance upon any man. Rather, it, it is then that thou art beloved of the devil in that thou hast become their servant. But be not slow to repent and ask the Lord for strength to love thy brother, and thou wilt then see that there is peace in thy soul. And I hadn't looked this over again. I hadn't reread it. Um, and it's been 16 years since I read the book of St. Saluan's sayings and things. But this is exactly what happened this afternoon when I... Stopped looking at others. And then I, uh, I felt sorrow. I repented of my um, sense of lack of humility or uh, resentment. I had resentment. It just came in a flash and it left it really quickly when the Holy Spirit helped me, and I'm sure my guardian angel, reminding me of my parents helping, reminding me of how hard the kids worked on their own, of their big, huge student loans that it took them several years to pay off, um, and their hard work in college, every summer working, the one went to Aust did a year abroad in Australia, and all through that she worked in a nursing home part time, and while going to taking courses there. So, um, and my parents helped pay for some of the air flight. I helped pay. It was a group effort, and and so I got off of it. I got off of my resentment or my hurt little feelings. <laughs> that, you know, somebody doesn't want to talk to me, and that's fine. I've already had come to that, that it's in a way for the best. You know, moved on, moved on with his life, and is doing fine, and so am I. So, um, but um, I repented out there on that patio up on a ladder, and I asked God to help me to love 
I even thought of some cousins, you know, and I thought how grateful that they had included him in a family gathering this last summer in New York, where I have some cousins who live in New York area, Boston and New York and New Jersey area. And one of their kids had a, a anniversary party or something with his wife. And I saw in a photo on that my son and his wife were included. And I thought, thanks be to God that they're included in the family. Um, it's, but it was humbling. You know, I'm not invited. I think they realized that it, it, I would have made it an attempt to get there. But it would have been hard, and it wouldn't have been good because my son doesn't want to have relationship, and they know that. My cousins know that, but they included him and did the right thing. So um, things can be humbling, but when when we follow this pattern that St. Saluan mentions, to love others, to love our fellow human beings, and God will love us. Um, and think not about uh, looking askance upon others or whether they're looking askance upon us. Let that go. Um, because that's, he says here, that's when the devil gets involved. So be not slow to repent. In other words, repent right away. Which, by the grace of God, I, the Holy Spirit, had me very soon come up with this. That, you know, how, but it's because I also, all this peace I was been having was suddenly disrupted. And I wanted the peace back. And I also recognized from, um, just what we've been talking about lately, that I don't want to lose that love of everyone and the forgiving everyone and praying for everyone. And it's that forgiveness. And then all of a sudden, being, I realized that I was becoming resentful. And like I say, it was just a short little, a short, maybe a minute even, a thought that came. Thoughts can come very quickly. And the Holy Spirit helped me immediately repent of that and get right back to, um, I, you know, the Lord gave me the strength to think, to love my cousins for including them, him and, and his wife. And, and then it says, thou wilt then see that there is peace in thy soul. I had been brought back to, to peace. That whole thing maybe took a minute and a half. The thoughts, the repentance, you know, the thinking through, the uh, even the part where I was um, resentful and feeling the unrest in me. And I even had time to think, you know, oh, you know, with, the, with this uh, lack of peace in me up on a ladder, that's not smart. You know, get back to peace, get back to love. And, and it, so take these little lessons that we that God gives us these lessons to learn that, that we need to humble down love others pray for them forgive them and then if thoughts come to us if we have resentment or anything like that going on get rid of it get rid of it come back to peace and love find the love in the situation Find the love that's there. And uh, don't, don't let uh, looking at others, askance at others, wrongly at others, or think about them looking at us wrongly. My son looks at me in a way that isn't pleasant, but we cannot let that interfere with the peace. We still love the person. We love the person. Pray for the person and forgive. And how beautiful if he would do the same for me. Then there would be a unity. So we pray for that to happen someday. 
um, if, if it's within God's will, the timing of it. These things we can't make happen in our timing or in our way, our, the will that we want it to be. It's always God's will. The timing, the way it's going to unfold might not happen until we're on the other side. So St. Saluan also says, the spiritual fruits of love are plain. Peace and joy in the soul with all men dear to you and you shed abundant I don't know what that word is. You shed abundant tears and you shed abundant tears for your fellow man and for everything that both hath breath in all creation. So he's telling us, and we, we know this, we're being reminded, that um, the fruits of love are peace and joy in the soul with everyone, everyone dear to us, that we love all people. And we shed abundant tears for our fellow men, for our fellow people, and for everything that has breath and all creation. So we love all, we have compassion for all, to the point that we shed tears of love for others. St. John the Divine declares that God's commandments are not grievous, but a light burden. But they are light only when there is love. Where love is not present, everything is difficult. See, for just those two or three minutes this afternoon, up on that ladder, I was doing the trim brushing. I'd already gotten the tape across and just brushing in the edges so then I could go along with the roller from the ground with a pole on the roller. I was right up there. I know where I was when it hit me the flash of, of first feeling sorry for myself and then thinking of what I had done, you know, and you know, lost the humility and then lost the, 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 the need to get that gratitude back and to think of the reality of how everyone, everyone contributed. Um... And it was all very loving and very good. Everyone worked hard. Everyone chipped in. There was peace. There was joy. There was love. And there still can be. And um, where love is not present, everything is difficult. And I was losing humility. Then the humility was there, the love returned, the peace and joy returned, and I continued on in all this glow of thinking how wonderful it is, and I was totally fine with being cut off. I knew I, I've had this peace about it, that it's okay. That's love and uh, therefore preserve love and lose it not for though it is possible to recover love this can only be at the cost of man of many tears and prayers and without love life on earth is hard to continue in malice is death to the soul from which may may the lord save us so thankfully, last October, end of well, about this time period, um, the words, you know, the, the pray, love, forgive, and live your life. Live your life saved. Live your life with love in it always and forgiveness for others. And you don't need to worry about other people. Our love, 
our forgiveness, our prayers will bear fruit, will bear fruit for the others. Our forgiveness will. God will see that we love and we pray and we forgive and we forgive ourselves. I didn't handle a situation well with them. So I had a part in him wanting to cut off because I, I didn't handle it as well as I could have. But my wonderful cousins with their love included him and his wife in this family gathering last summer in New York. And they went, and they all looked very happy in the photos. And even back then, I remember at first I had this little tinge that I wished I could have been there. You know, the, the self comes in. So see, I don't yet have that, um, that humility. What was it called? Uh, complete humility? No, um, to be humbled entirely. I'm not entirely humbled yet. Just keep working on it. Can't get down about it. We just keep working on it. God will keep giving us experiences to be humbled by and to practice with. So, um, but we, we don't want to live our life here on earth without forgiveness and without love of others. Because then we live, it's death to our soul. It's malice. It's malice. If we do not love and forgive others. So, um, these thoughts of St. Solomon are, are, are thoughts that Jesus emphasizes in his teachings. So, I had written these things out. Um, through another human being, St. Solomon. Uh, took Jesus' teachings and fleshed them out for himself and for us, gave more examples, thought about it, prayed about it, and um, wrote it out in, a, in an additional way for us to learn and to consider the reality of what Jesus asks for us, asks of us, and what we must do. In suffering, we must be careful to not suffer that which is a suffering of our own lack of love and forgiveness. This is not suffering brought by God as gift, but rather suffering in collusion with the devil. It is evil suffering, hate suffering, self-pitying suffering. As St. Soluan says, it is death to the soul. That's when we, we suffer... Uh, without love and forgiveness. And we have to just sort of let it settle in a little bit. That if we, if we suffer things that aren't from God, and we suffer um, situations that are, let me go over some of these, hate suffering, self-pitying suffering, evil suffering, Suffering in collusion with the devil. Suffering that is not brought as a gift. Not holy suffering. All this other kind of suffering is a suffering that we have when we do not have love and forgiveness. So it's just very, very important that we keep, we keep holding on to love. Pray, love, and forgive. No matter what, we have to tell ourselves that. Get over ourselves. Get over ourselves. And simply love the others. And forgive and think. Think in terms of love. Like, like the Holy Spirit had me think of my cousins in love. Of how loving to include my son and his wife. They're, they're aware that he's cut me off, and they're aware how much it hurt me. 
Now my self-pitying, my self-pitying thing could think, well, well, they shouldn't have invited him, you know, if they knew what I went through, you know, or if he knew, or if, if, um, and you could, I could even think, and I did for a flash, what would my aunt have done? Would she have included, you know, well, yes, she was a top class woman, <laughs> but see the mind, all the, the self pity, the evil can get right in there in our thoughts. And then love is all of a sudden eroded. And the forgiveness we've done is lost then. When love's eroded, everything else is lost. The graces are lost. So immediately get that love back. And then the forgiveness flows in again. And everything is peace and joy. And all is well with the world. So, um, but to, to be otherwise is death to the soul. So, forgiveness, humility, obedience, love. All must be in place as the front guard against the legion of devils, which would rather us retain, retain hurt and anger. <clears throat> These are sufferings of the soul. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get... <clears throat> so... <clears throat> So devils, the evil, evil wants us to retain hurt and anger. Sufferings of the soul that come from insults, injuries, that means emotional injuries, our hurt feelings and things too, or physical injuries or mental injuries even. Memories. I went back. I even went back to early years and even vicious crimes against us. If we do not forgive and love and humble ourselves to do this out of obedience to Jesus Christ who did all this even though he is God and is love incarnate, he humbled himself even though he had no, no humil no no pride, <laughs> he humbled to show us how important it is to humble oneself. We are not victim souls of the sacred heart of Jesus, but rather make ourselves victim souls of Satan if we do not forgive and love and humble ourselves enough to have this freedom of love and forgiveness because it's pride it's pride that interferes with love and it's pride that interferes with forgiveness because it's pride that reminds us that we are wounded we were done wrong or, or isn't it ridiculous that someone keeps this going this long? Well, not to the person, not to my son. It's not ridiculous to him. He's not where I am spiritually. He's younger. And he uh, felt uh, it egregious, he said, egregious that I had broken confidence of something he had told me but the conditions had changed his sister had not been told and and the ex-husband had told the son that he had told her his sister what had happened to the her her child and no so but my mistake was is i should have asked the son or told him what the situation was and say, I'm going, I should have said in advance, I need to break your confidence 
because your dad is telling other people anyway, but he did not tell your sister, and she needs to know what happened. I could have said, would you tell her what your dad told you, or I'll need to tell her. She needs to know it's her son so that this thing happened to. And it was a medical kind of a scary thing that she should have been told immediately, awakened no matter what, but wasn't. It was all very bizarre and strange. And of course, in my position, having been married to the person who lies, is a sociopath and a narcissist. So I know how the person, how he lies and um, had a, has a temper and what for whatever reason, um, there were lies going on with that situation. Not that the grandson had had this medical event. That sounded real enough. But the surrounding issues around it. You know, what was he doing? Telling, talking about the grandson in a negative light to his son and to his other daughter, but not letting the mother know, his other, the daughter of the child know what had gone on in the middle of the night, medical event, some kind of seizure of some sort. It sounded terrible. Frothing at the mouth and um, screaming incoherently, not knowing where he was, thrashing about. EMS should have been called. He could have aspirated on frothing. Um, so, yeah, it was bizarre. Um, but since I told his sister what had happened finally, when I realized she had never been told, it took me about for about six weeks, I didn't say a word about that event. But then when I realized she hadn't been told, I did. And then that's what made the son angry with me. That I had broken my word, egregious breach of confidence, and he cut me off. And um, so even the premises of it come from evil. It comes from evil, from lies. Someone's lying. And why would uh, his father have him be in strict confidence if the daughter already knew? Then why should it be such a big secret? See, so it's, it was all evil was at the root of it in a way. And um, but I mishandled it myself. So, um, I admit that in humility with this with this situation, but it's all a matter of we need to keep the keep on ourselves. No matter what how it affects other people, we must keep the love and the forgiveness going and the humility, because if we start feeling sorry for ourselves, or if I start blaming. You know, like, I, I need to take responsibility myself that if I had called the son in ahead of time, I didn't think to do it. I honestly did not. I was so upset to find out that my other, the daughter, the, hus the, the mother of the boy, hadn't been told after all that I was just fit to be tied, you see. Well, pride, anger, not a good place to be when you're making a decision. I talked it over with Dr. H and my pain doctor. They both said, you need, the mother needs to know what went on that night, what the medical event was that she's not been told about. And uh, so she can get him checked out if she wants to, even later, brain scans or something, or at least be aware. But, um, so it got involved, it got tricky. And, uh, but I went for really, a, well, it's what been near, it's been 16 months now. No, 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 nearly two years, that's 24 months. 
um, 20 months it's been. Um, but I went through a good year of a lot of unrest and sorrow and um, pride, though, um, until I came to this love, praying, and forgiveness. And then, then the whole thing just lifted from me. And I forgave myself for not thinking of how I could have handled it differently. You know, could have called him first. I th He probably would have said, no, you can't tell her. And then I would have been left with, well, she still needed to know, so who's going to? And he wouldn't, and then I would still have to. But at least I would have gone through a better process. So if it ever happens again... <laughs> I don't think it will, um, but uh, or I won't ever find out about anything like that, which is fine. I'm I'm relieved in that sense too, but um, anyway, we we cannot retain hurt and anger. Um, it's just pointless. It takes away the love and the forgiveness we have to offer. And humility is critical. It's crucial. Because it's the evil kinds of suffering that feeds on pride. The sufferings that come from God, there will not be pride involved. And if we bring pride into it, then we will have the unrest because pride dispels love and, and without love, then the forgiveness is gone, and we're right back at the beginning. So here it says, St. Saluan offers a test. One day, pray to the Holy Spirit to love all mankind, and go about the day and night in love and forgiveness. The next day, live without love and forgiveness, and we will see the difference. Well, I just had a three-minute, two- or three-minute glimpse of it on the patio this afternoon. I don't want to go a whole day without love and forgiveness and humility either um, because it was the humility, the, the, the facing that I was becoming resentful and prideful and self-pitying and all these things that indicate pride that... Uh, caused me to humble down and get right back to seeing all the love, the love of my cousins, the love of my son and his wife for that side of my family that he joined in. See, that's hopeful. If he were really, you know, really hated me, he would maybe not even have anything to do with my cousins, with my first cousins, you know, with with that side of the family. So it, you know, it, it's a it's a beautiful thing, but um, the devil was trying to trick me, though that's for sure, and I was falling to it just briefly, and I don't want that. So anyway, that's his that's his little test. He says, pray one day to the Holy Spirit to love all mankind and go about the day and night in love and forgiveness. The next day, live without love and forgiveness and see the difference. Um, well, I wrote in here that I don't want to risk that, but I didn't, back then, 16 years ago, I didn't, I was working still on other things that I was upset about. I hadn't, had these 16 years and more experiences. So God wants me to learn it at another level, a deeper level now that I understand more and have more life experience and something that's more hurtful to me, the loss of my son, in essence, that's painful. So that's a good lesson to start with. And um, to, to have that, overcome and lifted by love and forgiveness tells me a lot. That's a major grace. So um, if we do what Jesus says, we're going to be okay. 
We've just got to do exactly what Jesus says. Love and forgive and humble ourselves. Always stay humble. And that means we have to be alert to all the different little nuances that pride masquerades as. Pride dresses up in all kinds of little aspects, facets of pride that we don't even recognize is pride is at the root of it. But we'll get better at it the more we live and the more we come to desire to love and forgive and practice it. And you can do it even without your heart being in it. At least it's a start to force yourself to love and forgive others. Eventually, it will all click. It will all click. <clears throat> so, anyway, I wrote back here, uh, I do not even want to risk that day without love, for I have had them. I have had days of anger, hurt, self-pity, justified agony from grievous injuries but yet struggle with forgiveness and letting anger breed even more hate. I didn't think I was hating, but to not forgive those who have hurt us most is the opposite of love. That is hate. How do we forgive? It takes prayer, desire to forgive, and practice of the will to forgive. Just will yourself to forgive. I had to do that. I still do at times, but it's somehow lately, since I understand the relationship of praying for people, loving people, and forgiving them in that order, and then living my life accordingly, <clears throat> and, and the importance of humility, somehow it's all coming together. And it will for you. If it's coming together for me after 16 years, It'll come together for you faster, I'm sure, because <clears throat> that's a long time. But it doesn't matter the time it takes, does it? It's that we get it, and I don't get it fully. I'm not entirely humble. I'm not entirely in pure love. I'm not entirely in pure, you know, I'm not purified. So I'm, I'm not there yet, but getting there by increments. And that's okay. Slowness is fine. So, um, <clears throat> so it takes, you know, praying, desire to forgive, practice of the will to forgive. The Holy Spirit will work on our souls, minds, hearts, and bodies. One day we will realize we have no hate and only love for that person or situa situation that was so hurtful. And that's what I've come to, except for two or three minutes today. I didn't have hate yet, but I had unrest, which was bad enough signal to me. I didn't want to go another minute, not another minute. And the Holy Spirit rescued me. With forgiveness, with love, and then to see all the love involved and all of the participation of many loving people who helped rear my children and even now are helping their lives to be wonderful and filled with love, love of family. And I've thought of one good thing with, <clears throat> and that is, because I've always prayed I didn't want my children to suffer as I've suffered, which of course isn't, they, of course they suffer. And they suffered a lot as children um, with, with, a, with all the pain I had in our financial situation. They suffered a lot of, at many different levels. And I wasn't very good at handling suffering early on at all. You know, and I'd have to be up and cook or, you know, do things. And, and I would lose my temper easily. The pain would get to me. I would be grumpy. And so, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't easy for them at all. And I see all that. And I have to forgive myself for it because it takes 
It takes time to be able to manage pain. Most things don't come in a flash of glory. It's through a lot of increments of learning and progression and practice and and other people helping with pain management like Dr. H gave me lots of tips and worked with me on different techniques for pain management and the sisters at the convent helped me with concepts of suffering I didn't know as a Protestant a different way of viewing suffering and then you know the scriptures and all and so much that goes into it and being a victim soul of the sacred heart of Jesus and all that's involved in that that's so positive and good um, <clears throat> and discerning what suffering is of God and what suffering is of evil and we can pretty much discern if there's hate and envy and pride involved it's a suffering of evil so we just learn over time the Holy Spirit will help us ask the Holy Spirit ask Jesus for graces the Virgin Mary said she's ready and willing to help dispense the graces from her son there are so many graces that people never think to ask for let's ask for the grace of being entirely humbled let's ask for the grace of purity of love of, of pure forgiveness of, of purity of love and of automatic forgiveness just instantaneous forgiveness with our pure love and to love everyone in the world and to forgive and to f truly forgive ourselves that's a burden lifted so that we can love ourselves in a holy way and when we love ourselves in a holy way it all redounds to God because God's the one that's healing us God's the one that is is putting all this love into us and is forgiving our sins for us God's forgiving us and that's when all the the upset leaves and the bondage and the uh, depressions and the even the anxieties I have it too we all have anxieties and stresses at times and and get low and, and down but the more we come to purity of love the more we practice love the more we practice forgiveness and the more we ask the Holy Spirit to help us and to forgive ourselves then we we have less and less of the other of the sufferings that come from um, self really and not good the devil wants us depressed he wants us downcast and in despair so um, anyway we, we pray and ask the Holy Spirit um, and he will work on our souls minds hearts and bodies one day we will realize we have no hate and only love for that person or situation that was so hurtful and when we have all that love we will have forgiven that person also or that situation we can forgive situations also I forgive the situation that went on with my grandson it broke my heart to hear of it but I understood and I have compassion I have compassion for my former husband he, he doesn't know what he does he he doesn't I, I I haven't been with him for years but the 10 years I was or nearly 11 it was uh, he believes his lies and his stories and he probably believed it or, or wished that he had told the daughter but he didn't and all is forgiven and we have to add, add uh, extra measure of forgiveness 
and compassion for people, even if they have personality disorders that we think, well, at some point in their life, they could have stopped it. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't have that disorder. So I don't know what it would be like to have lied so much that you believe your own lies. So I just don't know if there's a point in time where you would have the strength or the capacity as a child to realize, oh yeah, I've got a problem, I'm lying, and I'm liking it, and now I'm believing it. I don't know if if there's that awareness in a sociopath. So I lack the knowledge of that. I guess like next time I talk to Dr. H, I'll ask, but it, it doesn't change the reality. Still the only thing, the only action for me as a Christian, as a victim soul who suffers on behalf of others at times, suffers for my former husband in love, is to forgive the person and to keep loving the person and praying for the person. That's the only way forward for ourselves and also for the others. And it's it's a positive way forward. It's a win-win. Even though we may not see the, the um, progress in the other, the Holy Spirit will certainly let us see it in ourselves. And to do otherwise, there's never going to be then a chance for progress in others or in situations. It'll always be dismal then. Well, that's no way. That's not God's way. That's not holiness. So, love, pray, love, forgive, and live our lives like that. God bless his real presence in us. And there's more on this. We'll continue the next video. Because St. Saluan has a patron saint. St. Simeon the Stylite. And he has different things to say. And St. Saluan has more to say about this aspect of um, suffering and, and evil. And overcoming evil. Um, spiritual combat. Well, not just evil, but just combating. Combating the different ways that evil tries to get in, usually through pride. So have a beautiful evening or day. Um, pray, pray, love, forgive, and live your life. God bless you.